Hi everyone, it's Kirchi. For this crafting video, I am gonna try something completely different, and it involves this. What is this exactly? This is a VHS tape case, and my thought was to turn this into a half poly pocket, half actual themed VHS case. The inspiration for this came one day when I suddenly thought about all of my Disney VHS tapes. Of course, those have long been gone. My parents donated them, along with my original Polly Pockets, much to my regret. So I started searching for blank VHS cases to see what inspired me. Maybe I can make a Polly Pocket out of them. And I came up with this idea of recreating my original Disney VHS tapes, but with a Polly Pocket twist. And the VHS I am starting off with is The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is a perfect craft for this Halloween season. As you guys know, Halloween is my favorite holiday and something about this holiday just puts me in a crafty mood. The Nightmare Before Christmas is also the very first movie that I saw in America. The night I arrived in this country, this was the first movie that my mom put on. My sister and I watched it all night and of course we got nightmares. When you're a kid, movies just seem a lot scarier. Nonetheless, this is one of my favorite movies. As I'm sure is true for most of us, this is truly a classic. So here is a graphic that I made of the Nightmare Before Christmas cover, and this isn't exactly how the original one looked. I did modify this area to make it look better, make it look more modern. And this excerpt I got online, these images I also got online, and I just added my own twist to it. As a designer, I try to make things a little bit better, better typography, better colors. So I went ahead and did this off camera. I designed it on my computer using Illustrator and Photoshop, printed it on beautiful glossy paper and cut it out. I wanted to do this off camera so that I can just leave a movie on in the background and get in the zone. Although I didn't watch The Nightmare Before Christmas when I designed this, I actually watched the Final Destination series. I guess I just have a thing for the macabre and bloody gory things. So this is the cover that will go on this right on the front here. There's a sleeve here and I can just slip it right in. But before I do, this needs a repaint because it's clear, it doesn't look very spooky. So I'm gonna paint it all black. Ta-da, it is now all black. I just used regular black acrylic paint for this and I sealed it with a matte varnish. As you can see, this was hastily painted. I'm not really a very good painter. I know that I give the illusion that I'm good at painting because I repaint my Polly Pockets, but I'm very, very impatient and I'm sure that if I took the time, I could really clean this up. But because I'm such an impatient artist, this is the result so we can see some streaks. But that's okay because this whole thing is gonna get covered by some really cool stuff that I'm gonna make. And the whole purpose of the repaint was to make this black so that it really fits the theme of Nightmare Before Christmas. So my plan is on this side is gonna be three rooms and each of the room is going to be a scene from the movie and on this side is an actual mock-up of a VHS tape. So it looks like a real VHS tape but with an added twist on this side. So now I'm going to attach the cover on the front because I haven't seen what it looks like yet. And here it is. That is not bad at all. The plastic is a little scuffed up, but I think it adds to the whole vintage look of it. VHS tapes, as we know by now, look a little bit old, a little bit weathered. Here it is closed and I think it looks pretty close to the original. The sizing is just a tad off, but I'm not too worried about that. Here is the middle section and this is key for displayability because I eventually plan on making more of these, and when I display them side by side, I want them to look nice and cohesive. And lastly, we have the back, which does look like a real VHS case. When you go to Blockbuster, you want to read the back of the case to see what the movie's about. So the first step is done, I think it looks very successful, and now we can move on to the hard part. This is a graphic I made for each of the rooms. This will go right in here and I'll glue it in just a minute after I'm done with the other pieces. The top will be Jack's room where he experiments with some Christmas things. The middle is going to be Dr. Finkelstein's laboratory and the bottom is going to be Oogie Boogie's dungeon. 
And here is a design of the VHS tape. It has the Nightmare Before Christmas title in the middle, as VHS tapes do. And my plan is to put this right here so that when you open it up, it looks like there's an actual VHS tape in there. But of course, this isn't gonna be some floppy piece of paper. I took some balsa wood and cut them to size. I'm going to glue these together to form a little box. And I'm gonna glue this right on top so that there's more volume to kind of imitate what a real VHS tape would look like. I also have these two balsa wood pieces, which will be separators for the room. So one will be here and one will be here. I'm going to glue these together to form that box using Gorilla Wood Glue. This is also my first time working with balsa wood. It's great for miniatures and mock-ups, so I'm very excited. Here it is assembled and painted, and now I'm going to glue the design on top. Ta-da! It looks pretty close to a real VHS tape. Now I'm gonna glue the graphics I made for the rooms onto the VHS case. The boring part I didn't show is all this took a lot of measuring to make sure everything fits. Then I'm gluing the separators made of balsa wood that I painted black. Now for the tedious but fun part, making all the characters and little elements to create the Nightmare Before Christmas scenes. Starting off with Jack Skellington, the main character. He has very easy shapes to work with because he's basically just a circle and some long stringy parts. My sculpture is not going to be proportional to how he looks in the movie, but I like it because I've accepted the fact that no matter how hard I try to copy something, my own art style eventually comes out on its own. My style is more cutesy and cartoony, so you'll see that Jack here will turn out looking more like that versus how he looks in the movie. The sculpting technique I'm using here is something I like to call flat sculpting. I don't know if that's a real term, and I certainly don't want to take credit that I made it up, but basically what it is, is a sculpture that's flat rather than 3D. Back when I used to make polymer clay jewelry, this was the type of jewelry I made. I'm using polymer clay for this project, and since many people have asked me what brand of clay I use, this is called Primo and it comes in so many colors and it's very pliable, which is why it's my go-to for crafting. Another brand I like is Fimo, and that's arguably more popular than Primo, so you can give that a try too. I also thought about using cheap white clay and just painting the details afterwards, but I think this technique is faster even though I'm using a more expensive material. So Jack is coming along nicely here. I obviously sped this video up, but I'm a pretty fast sculptor. I've been sculpting for over a decade and I'm not saying I'm the best or anything like that, but I can definitely work with intense speed. As I said earlier, I'm a very impatient artist, so any type of craft where I can work like a mad scientist is a craft I'm interested in doing. Now comes Zero, our favorite ghostly canine. Wouldn't it be cool if our pets can come back as ghosts and still play with us? Or maybe that would be super creepy. I would, however, be terrified of people ghosts. I will actually watch any scary movie except movies that involve ghosts. I'll watch the most messed up, gory, violent, WTF films, but I will actively avoid ghosts. They just freak me out. This is the Christmas part of The Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm making some festive holiday lights to go in the corner of the box. This one's really easy to make because it's just a long spaghetti shape with some teardrop shapes. And there you have pretty Christmas lights. Flat sculpting is really just all about taking basic shapes, mostly circles, and manipulating them to form other shapes. This is why with drawings, you always start with a circle. It's the best shape, next to the quilted heart poly pocket. You can't have Halloween without jack-o'-lanterns, so I'm making a couple spooky ones. Again, it's just taking a basic shape and manipulating it. I have a couple ovals here, and I'm adding some texture to make them look pumpkin-y. Finally, I added tiny little stems to finish off the look. Our second character is Sally, and she's gonna be in Dr. Finkelstein's lab cooking up some sleepy poison soup. I was gonna make Dr. Finkelstein, but Sally is more iconic, and you can't have Jack without Sally. She was actually the hardest character to make because of the patchwork on her dress, plus she has stitches on her body. I'd also like to apologize for the very awkward pose I gave her. I think I was trying to give her some sort of flirty pose, but it didn't quite work with the shape of her legs. 
One of my favorite scenes in the movie was when Sally removed one of her arms to get away from Dr. Finkelstein, and the part where she seduces Oogie Boogie with her severed leg. Oh, and I can't forget the part where she jumped off a building, landed with her limbs detached, and she just stitched herself back together. No big deal. So you know what? I stand Sally. I'm glad I chose her over creating dirty Dr. Finkelstein. I'm making her hair on a separate ceramic plate so I can really add some details to show her hair strands. Then I'm gonna lift her up and place her right on top so it looks like her hair is behind her head. And finally, just adding the last bit of detail on her, such as her shoes and that flower she was holding. By the way, the scariest scene for me was when she was looking at a beautiful flower and it just burst into flames. It scared me so much as a kid for no reason and still scares me as an adult. Now I'm creating a giant cauldron to hold the soup she's cooking. My all-time favorite scene in the movie was actually when Sally fed Dr. Finkelstein the soup. When she scooped it up with her fake spoon, it honestly looked so good. I would eat it. This is just a design I'm improvising, so I added a spooky face but made sure it's still cohesive with the rest of the characters. Lastly, I'm adding Sally's stitches. I didn't like this part so much because I'm working with such a small surface that the stitch details didn't show too well, but we can get away with it because the world of Nightmare Before Christmas is messy, chaotic, so things don't have to be too perfect. Her dress was the worst and admittedly I didn't like making it, but it's what gives Sally her signature ragdoll look. Can't forget the spoon. This isn't the fake spoon she uses, but rather the one she gives Dr. Finkelstein. What do you think the soup tasted like? I'm thinking pea soup, but it probably tastes like vomit. And to top it all off, I'm adding these little green things to make it look like the soup is very putrid, like vomit. Now onto the last scene, Oogie Boogie's dungeon. By this point, I could not wait to make Oogie Boogie himself. I just had this very detailed thought of how I wanted him to look. I love how he's large, has those wispy pointed arms, and he's got a lot of texture. Ironically, he's my least favorite character because he stressed me out. I felt so bad for Santa when he was all tied up with bugs crawling in his beard. It actually took me a while to realize Oogie Boogie was the villain in the movie. I thought he was just another spooky character like the rest of them, but he was indeed the villain that Jack defeated in the end. Poor Oogie, he just wanted his bugs. I especially loved adding these stitches and textures on him. I'm using this brush with metallic bristles to give him a cloth-like texture. And lastly, his dice. Can't forget about his dice. Snake eyes, of course. Up next, the bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. I rolled a noodle and cut it into smaller noodlets to create little worms. He has a plethora of bugs living inside his burlap sack body, but for the sake of this project, I'm just doing worms. Now I'm doing sort of a millipede type worm. Even though this is just clay, I'm already cringing because I absolutely hate bugs and worms and anything that can potentially crawl inside my body and lay eggs in my brain. Here's an impromptu thing I decided to make, which is Oogie Boogie's roulette. I'm using brighter colors for this because in the movie, he's in a very dark room, but his gambling equipment has some sort of black light slash neon light thing going on. I love how his room is the opposite of the rest of the movie because it's bright like Christmas, but Oogie himself is evil, unlike Santa who spreads love and joy. There's gotta be some sort of metaphor there, but I currently have a headache as I'm narrating this, and I want to save my last remaining brain cell trying to figure out what Dune is about. Seriously, I sat through nearly three hours of that movie, and I could not tell you the plot. Again, this roulette isn't an exact replica from the movie, I am improvising, so I just carved some random symbols that totally don't look like we're summoning the devil. Alright, the clay sculptures have been baked and cured, and now we are ready to paint. I'm not sure what this technique is called, but it's when you dab a lot of paint on the crevices and wipe it off with alcohol. And after you wipe it off, it creates a weathered vintage look. This is where I really have to trust the process because it looks like I'm making a mess of things. But we'll see soon enough that there's a purpose to this madness. Art is supposed to be fun and chaotic at times. 
Well, I spoke too soon because now I have to do some precision painting for his striped suit. My hand was shakier than usual here because it's been very, very cold. Well, it was cold, then it suddenly turned into an 80 degree October day, and I've pretty much accepted the fact that the world is falling apart. Which is why I turn to things like Polly Pockets and crafting and video games and hot Cheetos. Even though it's important to know what's going on in the world, it's also important to preserve a healthy state of mind and disassociating from reality is totally normal and healthy and we shouldn't feel guilty about that. And that's advice from my therapist. She went to school for this, so I trust her. By now, you've probably noticed that my paint job accidentally gave Jack a certain appendage. It's too late now. We're gonna keep the show rolling. Just don't look at it, even though you probably didn't notice till I mentioned it and I'm still talking about it. Anyway, these stripes are tedious and I'm ready to go back to painting chaotically now. I'm gonna apply the same paint job to the pumpkins. I'm actually kinda doing this the wrong way. Using q-tips wasn't very efficient. What you're supposed to do is use a paper towel to wipe flatly along the surface. But even though I was already thinking this in my head, I still kept going with the q-tip. To finish off the pumpkins, here are some adorably angry faces, similar to the artwork on the cover. Same thing with Sally and her cauldron of poison. Sally was even messier and more chaotic than Jack. I kept messing up and couldn't quite get the paint to stay in the carvings. Because like I said, do not use q-tips. But did I listen to myself? Of course not. Was the paper towel only inches away from me and could I have grabbed it in less than a second? Yes. But did I? No. Moving right along to Oogie Boogie, this was so satisfying because he has so many textures on him. This technique works best the more texture your sculpture has. I was strategically putting paint in the crevices, but then decided to get chaotic again and just slather paint all over him. It's what he would have wanted. And what's this? What's this? I'm actually using the paper towel. I finally listened to myself. And now you can see what a huge difference it makes. I'm just going around adding more details to the other characters. Sometimes I have a vision in my head that I can execute perfectly, and other times I have a rough idea, but I won't know exactly how it'll turn out till I actually make it. An easy way to add detail to something is to do these little dots. You might have seen it in the Polly Pocket repaints I do, but I love these dots and they're my go-to when I need to fill in space. Here's me trying to save Sally again. I wasn't really happy with her outfit, so I'm adding more details to it, like stitchings and whatnot. The biggest worry people have when they start out painting is they're gonna mess up a lot. But if there's anything Bob Ross has taught me is that there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Here's the part I loved, painting the soup. It looks very similar to the soup in the movie. I also loved painting the neon colors on the roulette because it's now starting to look like the one in the movie. I really like the contrast of the neon green against the black background. Same technique again with the rest of the roulette design where I take some black paint and give it a weathered look. That signature Tim Burton style. Back to Sally and this is where I got a little bit happier with her design. I added some white stitching on her and even though this isn't how she really looks, it just works. And we're done. Here's Jack Skellington, the adorable Zero, the spooky pumpkins, and the Christmas lights. Here's the best part, gluing them in their designated spots. This is where the scenes really come together. Now comes Sally, and although I don't totally love how she turned out, I think she's charming in her own way. And here's the cauldron of poison soup. I'm gonna stick her off to the side, and I want to create a good balance among these characters. Lastly, we have Oogie Boogie. You'll notice that the paper towel bits got stuck to him, but this is one of those happy accidents because it makes him look more cloth-like. And here's the roulette, which turned out really cool. I was originally going to stick him in the middle, but during my trial run, I accidentally dropped him in the corner here, and I ended up liking it. It fits more with his character. Again, happy accidents. The many, many worms took some time to glue on, but they're key in making him look extra gross. 
I wanted it to look like the bugs are coming out of him and falling from him, like that super icky scene in the movie. There are some empty spaces, so I'm making additional pieces here to fill in the space. The first thing I thought of is that giant orange and black snake. I love that snake because it's a good mixture of cute and terrifying. It also has such an iconic look that when you see it, you immediately think, yep, that's Tim Burton. I'm also making some potion bottles for Dr. Finkelstein's lab because I'm thinking this can be the poison that Sally uses to lace the soup. It also helps tie that whole scene together since she's in a spooky lab where there are all kinds of sketchy equipment that Dr. Finkelstein uses to conduct his experiments. Once those are baked and cured, I'm painting on the details. I was so eager to paint these stripes because this is key to making the snake really look iconic. I'm using a fine tip brush for this, which pretty much did all the work for me. So that's another option if you want to try this. This is supposed to be a gigantic snake, so my plan is to give the illusion that it's snaking through the VHS case. And finally, that same weathering technique on the potions. And now to glue them on. I absolutely love how the snake looks like it's going around each of the rooms. I was going to stop here and finish the project, but I had the sudden urge to make cobwebs. So I took some cotton balls and attempted to make cobwebs. I say attempted because I struggled a lot with these. They make it look so easy on YouTube, but when it came time to actually do it, I was getting pretty frustrated. I then started improvising by using Mod Podge to give it that stringy texture and actually help it stick to the background. I had immediate regrets after doing it the first couple of times, but the more cobwebs I added, the more I started to really like it. It just looks extra spooky and Tim Burton-y. And I hope that he sees this video and that it puts a smile on his face because his movies really made my childhood. He introduced the strange and macabre to me as a kid, and I think it's important for us to learn that just because certain characters look scary doesn't mean they're bad. I'm now taking some black paint and dabbing them on the cobwebs to make them look a bit dirty and weathered and help them blend in with the scenery. Then come the dots. As a final touch, I am adding dots, dots, and more dots to each of the rooms. Black dots for Sally, gold dots for Jack, and neon green dots for Oogie Boogie. And lastly, a matte varnish to protect all of my hard work. And here is the final product. I really love how it turned out. I love how I was able to go a little messy, a little chaotic, because the world of Nightmare Before Christmas certainly isn't perfect. Here we have Jack's room. It turned out exactly how I pictured it in my head. Actually, even better because as I went along, I decided to add those cobwebs. Even though his face is a little jacked up, pun intended, it's okay because the world of Nightmare Before Christmas is supposed to be imperfect. I love Dr. Finkelstein's laboratory. I had originally planned on making Dr. Finkelstein, but I decided to go with Sally because she's a little more iconic. And Oogie Boogie's lair turned out really, really cool. This is actually my favorite because I loved making him. I also loved making the roulette because I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it. And I always love when things turn out better than I see in my head. You guys can probably see the spots I missed when I was painting the matte coat on this. I didn't do that on purpose, but I don't mind it because again, this world is supposed to look chaotic and imperfect. That's another reason why I loved doing this project because I don't like to be perfect all the time. Sometimes I just want to let my inner crafter out and put a bunch of things on this canvas, not really having to think about it, just have fun. Whatever happens, happens. And now for the final piece. I put the fake VHS tape in here and it looks so legit. I love it. I'm gonna close it up and it's perfect. It closed perfectly and it just looks so legit like the actual VHS from the 90s. I absolutely love doing this and I hope to do more in the future. I have many more favorite VHS movies. Thank you for watching this Nightmare Before Christmas Halloween special craft and I'll see you on the next one.